Hey guys, welcome to Toy World Order right here on youtube.com slash toyworldorder and toyworldorder.com. I'm your host of all. This uh, is a unique way to do um, my usual haul videos. Uh, usually when we do a haul video, of course, we have all the physical merchandise here. We talk about it. Um, I shot a haul video for this, and we went on the 127 sale this year, the 127 sale corridor sale. Uh, and the problem was I shot it. I edited it, I exported it, and then I looked at it and thought, I cannot in good conscience release this because it looks like awful crap. So, mostly because I'm out of practice because I haven't filmed anything in a long time. Uh, mostly because I was not observant to my focus on my camera like I should have been. Uh, and I was just trying to get things done. And sadly, when you do that, things get screwed up. So, the pictures were crystal clear. The video looked awful. So... Uh, bad thing was, though, I filmed it all, put it all away that day, uh, and uh, it's a hassle. Not a hassle. It's it never it's never a hassle, but it's complicated to pull a lot of it out because I put it all away, um, and I was like, well, how do I do this? So I asked people on our fan group on Facebook.com, Toy World Order fans, um, what would you like to see me do? And I was like, I have the pictures. I can film a new video with the pictures. So I decided that was gonna what I was gonna do is a little it's a little different. But so I got the monitor here. I got the computer with the pictures, so you can see them. Uh, let's run through it though. Uh, I found a bunch of dollar comics, uh, dollar box comics, and a ton of dollar comics. Uh, every dollar box of comics we found, I dug through. And of course, I don't buy. Um, mainstream comics anymore. I go after the oddball licensed 80s stuff that either was related to toys or cartoons or some TV shows, just depends. Uh, so I go after those, whereas most people would dig up X Men and Fantastic Four stuff. I'm like, no, I don't need that. I mean, uh, so I found a bunch of licensed stuff, and the first thing I found was a graphic novel uh, on the based on the hit television show Dinosaurs, uh, the Jim Henson produ uh, produced Dinosaurs. Uh, it's just a collection of, of several stories in a graphic novel format. I don't know if they were ever released as single issues, but um, it was an oddball company. I'd never recognized the company, but so I picked that up. That was kind of fun. I uh, picked Marvel Comics uh, Transformers issue 32 up, <clears throat> which shows the Combaticons fighting the Protectobots. So I don't buy a lot of the Transformer issues of Marvel, but every once in a while I'll find them for a buck because a lot of times they're pricey, which is really weird, but um, if I find them for a buck, I pick them up. I found both issues one and issue two of King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, not only based on the Mattel toy line, but also based on the hit, car uh, not hit cartoon series. It didn't last very long, but the cartoon series, uh, King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. So I found two of the three issues, so that was fun. Uh, I found a Harvey Comics release of Stone Protectors. you got to love 90s knockoff turtle stuff. You really do. I found a uh, double-sized issue of Mr. T and the T-Force. Uh, terrible comic. Terrible. Now comics, they did a terrible comic with this. But, uh, but I have a lot of the other ones, so. I found an Archie series issue one of Kushkins. Uh, it's a kind of beat up cover, but I had this when I was a kid, so I was like, well, I'm going to buy that again. I found uh, issue 17 of the real Ghostbusters. I love that cover. Uh, both the Ghostbusters, actually all the Ghostbusters stuff I found still had the posters intact, so that's always a plus. Because I know when I was a kid, I pulled the posters out and hung them on the wall, so. Uh, these actually have the full color pinup inside. so And it's basically, it's that cover is what the pinups were. But I found Grill Ghostbusters uses 17. Uh, I found the six-part maxi series of superpowers. Now, eventually, so there was a five-part miniseries and a six-part maxi series. But somewhere along the run of the maxi series, they changed the maxi series to miniseries. It gets confusing. So, uh, But uh, this was issue three of the six-part maxi miniseries. Uh, and, of course, what's great about this is that all of these superpowers issues were drawn by Jack Kirby. Um, and it's always weird to me still to this day to see a lot of mainstream DC stuff, even oddball stuff like Dr. Fate and stuff, drawn by Jack Kirby. Of course, he created the New Gods and probably created uh, had a hand in creating some of the characters. But um, he was most, you know, most famous for doing Marvel stuff with Stan Lee, you know, Thor, Fantastic Four, the X-Men, um, all that kind of stuff. And to see him do DC... You know, Batman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Superman, especially Superman, is super kooky to me. Um, and I'm sure he did other things throughout his career with DC with mainstream superhero characters like that. But these were awesome to me. I, I love them. I found Real Ghostbusters issue 11. Uh, I found Marvel Comics Fraggle Rock number 5. And I found a ton of Muppet Babies. So I found Muppet Babies issue 19, issue 17, issue 16, 
issue 22, issue 21, issue 23, uh, and then Fraggle Rock issue 3. I found The Further Adventures of oops, let's make that Indiana Jones issue 8. I found Alf issue 16. Oops. I found Fraggle Rock issue 4. I found uh, the miniseries of Superpowers, the, the five-part miniseries, issue two of five. I found Popples issue three. I found these, uh, this is the six-part miniseries, so they changed it. Somewhere between three and five, they changed it from maxi to mini, but this was issue five. Uh, and Carrie, and I was thinking, yeah, Carrie found them. Actually, she did. Uh, Carrie's a huge New Kids on the Block fan, and of course, she grew up in that era. She loved the music. Um, she's seen him at concerts several times, so she, you know, she's... She, she loves that band, and she loves a lot of the memorabilia because she had it when she was a kid, and, of course, it's all vanished, but she's reclaimed quite a bit of it since then. Of course, the nostalgia fuel factoring into that. Uh, but we found a bunch of these old Harvey Comics releases for New Kids on the Block. What's interesting about this comic is that, uh, to, at least to me, and, of course, because the way the issue numbers are, they had, like, five different series running at the height of the New Kids popularity, so... That's what's interesting. Let's let's count them. So we had New Kids on the Block, Comic Tour 90. That's issue two. So that's one. The regular New Kids on the Block series, issue three. That's two series going. Uh, New Kids on the Block, Backstage Pass, issue two. That's three. New Kids on the Block, Chillin', issue three. That's four. And then New Kids on the Block, Comic Tour 91, issue three. That's five. So between, it looks like 90, 91, they may have had five or more series running at any given time with different issue numbers for new kids with different stories in them. That's kooky to me. That shows you how big New Kids on the Block was in the 90s. Um, they were huge in the early 90s, and it re late 80s, early 90s, and it really shows with stuff like this. Uh, new Kids on the Block, Chillin' Issue 2. I found Now Comics Slimer Issue 3. I found Sectars Marvel Comics Release Issue 3. Uh, the first issue of the six-part miniseries, See, it's like six-part miniseries, and then in a Maxa series, uh, it gets confusing. So issue one, um, Archie Adventure Series, Turtle Adventures, issue four, as well as issue one. And I loved issue one. I love that cover. Um, I had that cover when I was a kid, and it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, Alf issue 19 to the swimsuit issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, issue 23. Alf issue 17. Uh, Sectars issue five. Slimer issue four, Alf issue number nine, the all holiday issue, Sectars issue four, uh, famously with Stellara on the cover, which that figure never got released, which is very sad. Uh, Disney's DuckTales number seven, the Marvel UK's imprint of James Bond Jr. issue seven, super weird to see the UK stuff. Um, Boom Studios release of Big Trouble in Little China, which is a newer comic, uh, last five years or so. Um, Oops, I keep doing that. There we go. Uh, Walt Disney's Holiday on Parade, issue two. Sectars, issue one. And then the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, issue two. Uh, as well as Disney's DuckTales, issue nine. Walt Disney's Junior Woodchucks, issue one of four, which was a spinoff of DuckTales. And so a lot of comics. Um, I found a Garfield book, one of the little collector books. Um... Garfield loses his feet, his uh, his ninth book. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but I swear to you, uh, I haven't checked, I haven't seen other copies, but the publisher cut the bottom, like the top, there's too much at the top and there's not enough at the bottom of the covers, front and backs like that. But the interior is perfect, so I don't know if that was intentional or if it was a, just an accidental thing. But uh, we found a half price books warehouse. Uh, not a warehouse, but an outlet store. Uh, there's only one in the country that I'm aware of, according to their website, that I saw. But they have a bunch of stores, of course, and Half Price Books are famous for uh, finding puzzles and books and a lot of board games. Like a lot of newer tabletop games get traded into Half Price Books these days, uh, and a lot of people find them there for pretty affordable prices. So uh, we found this outlet store that had some cool stuff, but man, there was a lot of stuff in there to dig through. Uh, but I found the Jetsons, the official guide to the cartoon classic there. I found, uh, not there, but I found a Santa Claus the Movie Storybook while we were out shopping. Terrible movie. Terrible, terrible movie. Uh, Muppet Treasure Island, the Movie Storybook. Uh, sadly, uh, all nine of the full-color trading cards are gone. 
Uh, I found Walt Disney's Donald Duck 50 Years of Happy Frustration, which just, of course, celebrated Donald's 50th birthday years ago. Uh, we have a Goofy book that's the same format, um, but uh, so we now have the Donald and the, the Goofy ones of that, so that's kind of cool. You don't see a lot of these out in the wild, and this was the World of Wonder, the World of Snoopy uh, book, Snoopy's America, for the talking Snoopy. I never find the tapes ever in the wild, and trust me, when I find boxes of cassette tapes, I look through them. Um, and I never found a cassette tape in the wild unless it was packaged with the storybook, which I have found. But the tapes by themselves, I don't find. I find a lot of Mer I find a lot of Mother Goose books, a lot of Teddy Ruxpin books, some Mickey Mouse books, but Snoopy books are few and far between. Uh, and I found this uh, in a thrift store of all places, just hanging out uh, with their kids' books, and I bought it because, again, I don't see this stuff a lot, and it's hard to find because he was like one of the last animatronic releases released by Worlds of Wonder before they went under, um, and they were so, at the time, confident that there was work being done on a talking Charlie Brown to go with Snoopy that sadly never got past the prototype stage. Um, there are a couple prototypes floating out there in collector's hands, but... Um, and some pictures of that prototype, but we never got him, so sad. But uh, again, I don't find this stuff very often. When I do, I pick it up. I found an old uh, 60s release of Snoopy and the Red Baron, and it was basically just like um, a picture every page, and the pages are different color. It was really a really weird book, but uh, I picked that up. Uh, I found a little golden book of Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, The Big Cheese Caper. I found a Disney DuckTales Christmas at North the North Pole, which was Disney's Wonderful World of Reading series release. Um, so it's fun to find old DuckTales stuff. Uh, I have the G.I. Joe, I believe it's uh, Secret of the Mummy's Tomb book and, ta book and record set. And these were done in 71, 72 uh, for G.I. Joe. And there were four of them. So I have, I actually, the, the three that I found completed. But I found the Secret Mission to Spy Island. I found the Rescue from Adventure Team Headquarters. And then I found the Search for the Stolen Idol. So those actually, those finished my G.I. Joe book and record sets, which are... Kind of cool to find. Uh, I found a Rankin Bass production of The Return of the King of Story of the Hobbits. Yeah, that stuff's hard to find, too. Um, these were little books, probably about yay big, about yay long. Uh, but this is the Weather Smurfing Machine on the Smurfs. And then I also found a Snoopy's Brother Comes comes to Town. I wanted to say well, comes home. Comes to Town, uh, released by Random House. Uh, I found an old 60s release of Walt Disney's Goofy and His Wonderful Cornet. So those are, of course, you can see the original price, 19 cents. Look at that, 19 cents for that sucker. Uh, Alf Cools Off, which is this little um, Heidi book. And basically, you can kind of see the top of it in the picture, but there's a string, and the string is attached inside the book. And attached to the string is actually this little cardboard Alf figure, and the pages actually lift, and you can hide Alf in the little cool-out spots, in the shade, in the pool, stuff like that. It's super cute. But when I first got this book home and started messing with it, I started to try to pull the, the, the string out of there because I didn't know what it was for and then realized, oh, it's attached to something, and it's attached to the book. I probably should leave it alone. So uh, I found some little pop-up books uh, for Strawberry Shortcake. This one, Strawberry Shortcake and the Cat Napping, and Strawberry Shortcake and the Picnic Plot. So those were cute little books to find. Uh, a very old... Uh, late 50s early 60s Walt Disney's Goofy and Giant Trouble and these were like little novelizations where you had a story on one page and a picture on the other a story on one page a picture on the other so it alternated so. Uh, Marvel Magazine Group release of the Hulk for issue 26 uh, the magazine's Hulks were super weird like there was the Main Street Hulk book and then there was this magazine release book which I found a couple of these for Dave Draper over the years and this one was super kooky. I love the artwork. Like the the artists in there were like indie guys who, at the time, you would never see on a Main Street book. But they got to do stuff like this, so it's super. The stories are super weird, and it's crazy. Uh, these were cool. These were from Craftmaster. They did a few of these. They did, of course, uh, they did the Flintstones. They did Scooby Doo, and Yogi Bear is the one that I found. And these are four punch out figures. They're on you know punch board inside. You punch them out. And they come with paints. Um, six acrylic paint colors and you would paint the figures you know it has has brushes in there too and you would paint the figures uh, and create the little stories with them so it's kind of neat to find uh, I found a Star Wars Return of the Jedi things to do and make coloring book which was unused and then I also found the Star Wars Return of the Jedi coloring book which actually had a couple pages colored in it but I think both of those were a buck a piece so I wasn't going to pass those up for anything um, this was cool this was a big punch out book of uh, Sesame Street and the Paper Doll Players. 
Um, and it's Ernie Burt, Betty Lou, and Roosevelt Franklin as they perform Little Red Riding Hood and Goldilocks. Uh, and the, the front and back cover of the book becomes the stage. Uh, and then the interiors, of course, are the figures as well as all the little um, paper doll clothes that you would wrap around the characters um, to create these stories. So I love finding punch-out books like that because they're few and far between and uh, you just don't find them a whole lot anymore. I found a uh, paper model cut and assemble of a medieval castle. Nothing special there other than I love paper models. I love finding them. I think they're spectacular. I used to do a lot of them. I don't have the room or the time right now to do them, but uh, um, they're fun. I, I love paper models. I love doing them. They're, they're just they're a blast. So this one was cool just because it was a castle. and It was there. So um, found some DC uh, DVDs, oh, well, some DVDs, period, but this one was DC Comics Classic Collection Super Friends Volume 2, and I'm mad because I should have bought Volume 1, which they had, and I didn't because I thought I had Volume 1. But I had the new Super Friends Volume 1, not the original Super Friends, so I got my bought Volume 2, but again, I'm sad I should have bought Volume 1. And then I found some My Little Pony DVDs, and these were, these were interesting because Disney released um, Season 1 of the original G1 My Little Pony cartoon series, but it was missing uh, some special, like, multi-part episodes. These actually contained those, and this one being Flight to Cloud Castle and other stories, and then The Quest of the Princess Ponies and other stories. So those, along with one other one I have, actually complete that full run of My Little Pony cartoon. So Figures, you'll excuse me, I'm going to get a drink here. Figures were kind of light, were very light, actually. I did not find a lot of action figures on the sale. Usually in the past we found some good stuff, but... I did not find anything, and the stuff that I did come across was either super high priced or or it was just garbage. And this is the only thing that I found, action figure wise, the entire time we were shopping, was this um, platinum edition release of the Decepticon Triple Changers. Um, it's from several years ago. Uh, I'd never seen it in a store. I really didn't know it existed. At first, I thought it was a knockoff. Then I realized it wasn't. But it's Blitzwing and Astro Train in these super weird colors. Um, and it was 10 bucks. And I bought it because I don't have a Blitzwing. I've always wanted Blitzwing. Um, every time I found a G1 Blitzwing, he's in rough shape or missing stuff or broken. And I kind of wanted a nice one. And yes, his colors are not correct for the G1 original release, and I'm okay with that. But I I'm actually I'm okay with re-releases, period, because I most of my original run Transformer stuff from the first couple series is all Takara reissues because at the time they were cheaper to buy than buying vintage ones so um, I don't mind I don't mind reissues I, they're just on my shelf for play um, and for show so yeah. so I bought it it was 10 bucks it was the only action figure thing I bought the entire sale it was super crazy we found some puzzles we found three puzzles we found Mickey giving Pluto a bath and Pluto don't want none of that look at him he's like I don't want that bath why are you giving me this bath? I don't want that stuff scrub my butt. I don't want this bath. You a bad owner. Don't do this to me. Why are you torturing me? But bought that. Uh, bought a Looney Tunes Bugs Bunny puzzle uh, that shows Daffy Duck getting kidnapped by the Tasmanian Devil, probably to be eaten. <laughs> Poor Daffy. He never wins. And then I found a giant uh, Tiny Toon Adventures Act Maker Farms puzzle. And the, it was a 35-piece puzzle. And I kid you not, the, pu the puzzle pieces, of course, are that big. It's like a big floor puzzle. So I bought it. All the puzzles were complete, though, by the way. They were all complete. I always take a chance on puzzles. Usually they're a buck. I take a chance on them. If they're missing a piece or two, I still keep them because the box art's amazing. So um, that, those were fun to find. I've been buying VHS tapes for several years now. And VHS tapes are seemingly becoming more and more and more collectible. And I found... Uh, I've probably got about 500 VHS tapes at this point in the collection to the point now where I'm, I'm running out of room for VHS tapes, but I keep finding stuff that I, I want to pick up. And usually, you know, a lot of it's, as you'll see, animation. Um, some of it's live action, like this one, like the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking. I have Ghostbusters, I have Turtles. I have the original releases. Like, I, you can always check uh, on the boxes, usually, and see the copyright information to see, okay, well, that's, that's an original release. Or the old school logos, like the RCA Columbia Pictures logo. Uh, for their home video. so. But I found the new adventures of Pippi Longstocking. Uh, I found Inspector Gadget the Invasion. I found uh, a 45 minute uh, release of Punky Brewster Punky Power. I love that cartoon. Uh, some Disney Princess Collection videos. This one, uh, Ariel Songs and Stories, titled Giggles. 
Uh, and then uh, Jasmine's Enchanted Tales, The Greatest Treasure. I found a release of uh, from Family Home Entertainment, The Littlest Pet Shop, The Treasure of Sierra Pet Shop. Uh, Larry Harmon's Bozo, The World's Most Famous Clown, and Bozerk Bozo Adventures, which was cool because it's uh, it's animated Bozo stuff, but it's also introduced by the live-action Bozo. So, I found the, the a video called Battle Vision Doom on You, and these were interesting. I want to say they were... Uh, they were Tyco. I could be wrong on the company. But it was basically a play set. So it was a big play set. It came with G.I. Joe type figures and this VHS tape. And it would interact with the television. So it would interact with the VHS tape. So that you could fire the VHS characters. They would fire back. Um, you would accumulate points. But you would also take damage to the point where if you took enough damage... Um, your missile launchers would get blown up. Your rock, you know, your machine guns would get blown up. Like you would just pieces would get blown up, and they had motors in them, so they would they would literally spring apart. Um, so it was kind of like Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. But uh, there was only a few things for Battle Vision released, and I've looked them up because I kind of want one now. Uh, but they're a little little more than I want to pay right now for them. But the, I found the VHS tape that that came with the set. So Doom on You was the uh, was the tape that came with the set originally. So, um, whoops. I keep doing that. I keep making it smaller. Uh, I found Disney's The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventures, Stormy the Wild Seahorse. There were four of these released. This completes my set of Little Mermaid VHS tapes that Disney released for the animated series. Uh, I found, a, I think, volume four of Disney's Tailspin uh, called Imagine That. Uh, I found a bunch of Alvin and the Chipmunks stuff. This one's Rockin' with the Chipmunks featuring Michael Jackson. Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks Go to the Movies, Back to Alvin's Future, which was a direct-to-video release. Uh, it was only available on VHS, but Alvin basically goes back to the 50s, to his 50s version animated counterpart, and they have to work together to fix Alvin's future. So, I haven't watched it yet. I need to watch it. It's, it sounds super kooky. Alvin and the Chipmunks Nightmare on Seville Street. Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks Go to the Movies, Funny, We Shrunk the Adults. Another direct-to-video release for Alvin and the Chipmunks. So, uh, I found a McDonald's uh, toy displayer, and these are every time I find these in the wild and they're affordable, I buy them. Um, I shouldn't because they're huge and I run out of room quickly. But um, this one was cool. This was what am I going to be for Halloween? Uh, it was complete. It was only ten bucks, uh, so I picked it up. It had all the four cassettes that you could have got uh, every week sealed, and then it had all four characters. And of course, the characters were Grimace dressed as a ghost, Birdie dressed as a pumpkin. Uh, Hamburglar dressed as the vampire and Ronald dressed as Frankenstein's monster. Um, and you could get one of four audio cassette tapes or one of four um, characters with clip-on costumes every week. So it made it kind of difficult to try to get them all. But I have all the characters. I've never found the tapes, but now I have the tapes sealed. So um, that was kind of neat. It was 10 bucks. It was a displayer. I, I bought it just because we don't see enough of those. I think last year, the last time we went on the 127, I found a bunch of McDonald's stuff like Hook and the Peanuts displayer and stuff like that that I picked up. So um, I found a Flippy Dog's lunchbox. Uh, no thermos. The therm They did have a thermos in it, but the thermos was the wrong thermos, like the completely wrong thermos. I may have a Fluffy Dog's thermos that goes with this somewhere. I'll have to look for it. But uh, the sticker was a little beat up. I'd use some double-sided tape to put it back together. But um, I don't see a lot of Fluffy Dog stuff. Again, when I find it, I grab it. Uh, I found some stuffed animals. Kermit dressed as the Scarecrow from uh, the Muppets Wizard of Oz special. I found a vintage pound puppy, a large pound puppy, like one of the big ones. Uh, I found a Slimer, who is scary as all get out, who was probably a crane game prize. Um, it is the scariest Slimer I've seen in a long time. We'll get right past that. Let me just, one more. Uh, I found a Goofy. Uh, wearing Christmas garb, basically. He has a scarf on, he's got earmuffs, he's ready for uh, roasting chestnuts by the open fire. I found a applause release of one of the Smurflings, uh, the other female Smurf, and I can never remember her name. Um, but I found her. I didn't have her. I found a Wrinkles puppet, uh, one of the, the medium-sized puppets. Uh, she had her bone. Um, she was a buck. I mean, I've got three Wrinkles now. I've got a big, large male... And then I've got the two smaller females. So um, she's the one I've got with the bone, though. The bones are kind of hard to find. They the, she, and hers is still attached to her pocket. You know, you could attach them for the pocket, and they would get lost. And they're just puppets, really. They're just huggable stuffed puppets, but they're fun. Uh, we found some little Disney beanies. This one being the Mad Hatter. 
And then we also found a scary one because the human characters were always the scariest. Mary Poppins. It's the thing of nightmares, people. It truly is. Look at her. Look at her. She is frightening. Look at that face. It's scary. It's beyond scary. M moving on. Oops. There we go. <laughs> moving on. Uh, I found a pair of Mickey Mouse gloves. These are probably from the kids' gloves, but they're probably from the 70s. Um, the leather, as you can see on the side, it's a little... It's got a little damage to it, but... Um, it's still in really good shape, and I think it was like seven bucks for that. So we bought the pair just because I was like, "Well, that's odd. We don't have that. Let's get it." So that was those were fun to find. I found a lot of My Little Ponies on this sale, and I mean a lot. And the problem was is that everybody wanted five bucks a piece for a pony, and a lot of them were not in great shape and not worth five bucks that people wanted for them. I bought this one for five bucks only because of her headgear. Because it's the headgear that came packaged with the Megan and Sundancer. Um, or Skydancer. I can't miss Sundancer, I think. Um, it was it came with the pony that came with Megan. And you would put it on, you know, she wore that headdress. And I didn't have that for the version I have. So the saddle was just some random piece of accessory that came later in the line. But five bucks. I didn't want to spend that. But I wanted the headpiece. So I bought that. Avon. Uh... Over the years, for anyone's grandmother or mother who sold Avon products, um, knows that they sold little character-based shampoo bottles. And we found a Pluto with this box, and the guy only wanted two bucks for it. So we, we picked up Pluto, but uh, uh, he still has shampoo in him. I probably wouldn't use it and wouldn't recommend it, but it's in there. Um, this was fun. This is why I always say always dig because you never know what you're going to find because it's not just a catchphrase. It really is what we do. Um, this was in the bottom of a box at a guy. Um, of course, he had a bunch of die casts, but this was in the bottom of a box. It's had some sun damage, as you can tell, because the, the plastic is yellowed. But this was the 1918 Runabout Bank from Ertl, but it's the Toys R Us Jeffrey edition of it. Uh, and sadly, with Toys R Us closed in the States now, um, I didn't have any Toys R Us stuff. And uh, this is something I wanted for the collection. This is the most money I spent on anything all weekend long. It was 15 bucks. Um so that was the most that I spent on one item was this. So, But it was worth it. These were newer. Uh, a lot of this, the next few things here were uh, were newer, like 2006, probably Hot Topics releases. But uh, some Strawberry Shortcake riffs, wristbands, wrist cuffs, um, they were a buck. Uh, I found a memo board with uh, vintage Strawberry Shortcake stuff uh, characters on it, so that was fun. And, the, and you'll notice the strawberry in the bathtub. Uh, I found a button, but all of that corresponds to the stickers, and they all used the same imagery. Um, but and these four stickers, they were all on the bag together. It was all like a buck. But, of course, newer stuff. But with vintage, uh, the, the vintage images on it, I picked them up. I did find some vintage Strawberry Shortcake stuff. Um, I found two of the pack-in thank you postcards that came with the dolls and the play sets. And they were actual postcards you could send out as thank yous to people. Uh, with the artwork on them, which I love the old artwork. It's amazing. I also found from the later release in the line, the World of Strawberry Shortcake uh, Kinder booklet. I loved the Kinder booklets. Kinder was famous for their little booklets that showed you all the merchandise uh, for boys, girl stuff. It was They were always fun. But, uh, of course, this one's from the later because it's got the Strawberry Shortcake house in it. So uh, there's some later stuff in there. Uh, I found a pair. Found a pair of Ariel sunglasses. Because, uh, because it's Ariel. And yes, I realized that it's a Big Lots release. I don't care. I, I didn't have a pair of Ariel sunglasses. And now I have a pair of Ariel sunglasses for my creepy Ariel shrine. And that's where it's going to go. Don't judge me. I also found some stickers. Um, it had rained the night before we went to the sale. Um, of course, we went to Tennessee and to Pikesville, uh, up to Jamestown where this sale originated. Uh, when we got into the main part of Pikesville, it had stormed real bad all night long there. And a lot of stuff had gotten wet and probably ruined. But these had gotten some moisture in them from the rain. Um, so they were a little rough, but it was $0.10 cents for the pair. And at first I wasn't going to get them. And then I told Carrie, grab them, let's get them. They're $0.10. Cents. Who cares? So some aerial stickers. I also found some Tyco dresses for the Little Mermaid line that they released when the film first came out. Uh, Ariel's Dress and Fin Fashions. Uh, they don't have names. They're just these 
little fashion. Some of the bigger sets had names, but the little sets did not. Um, so they were 10 bucks for the pair. I figured why not. Uh, I found a Disney Mickey Mouse Club plate, like a little plastic plate from probably the 60s, uh, late 50s, early 60s, but with uh, the nephews and Donald celebrating Mickey Mouse Club, which is always weird because the Mickey Mouse Club TV series uh, famously created this idea of Donald being very jealous of Mickey. Um, and I don't remember if it was in the, it might, I think in the earlier cartoons he was like that too, but it really came to, to a head uh, with a Mickey Mouse Club, because of course, famously, Donald was like, you know, Donald Duck. You know, anyway. So, Donald's on that plate, which I always love finding stuff like that. So, since we were in Tennessee and pretty close to Georgia itself, we actually went through, it was weird, like we went through Georgia and then in Tennessee. So, we, we left Tennessee, went into Georgia, went back into Tennessee the way we went. It was really weird. But uh, in Cleveland, Georgia, back in the 80s, I don't know if it's still around, it may still be, but. Um, Xavier Roberts built Cabbage Patch Kids Babyland General Hospital. And there you could go and see the Cabbage Patch Kids born out of the Cabbage Patch. Like the nurses would pull the kids out of the Cabbage Patch. And it was a big ordeal. Like, you know, they, they, it was a tourist attraction. And they sold dolls there. And, um, but I found a shot glass for the Babyland General Hospital. And I don't collect Cabbage Patch Kids stuff. I famously stay away from that. Cabbage Patch Kids, Barbie, um, and you know, Joe and Star Wars are four lines that I stay away from because there's just too much, and I just don't want to get bogged down with all of that as well. Um, not that there's anything wrong with any of this stuff. I just I don't want to collect it because it's too much. But um, I had to buy that just because it was super weird, super odd, and uh, I was like, I don't know, who knows how many of these are left around? I don't even know if it's open still. I need to look. I keep forgetting to look to see if it's still around, but. Um, I found a, a pictorial visit to Universal Studios in Hollywood, and this was probably from the early 70s, but um, it's a mini souvenir folder. They're not postcards, but you would fold it out. It's about three and a half feet long when you fold it all the way out, um, and it's just pictures. It's just a pictorial tour of, of the different locations at Universal Studios. So uh, I also found a This is Disneyland, which is 26 colorful scenes from the happiest place on earth, which is probably from the late 60s. Um, just because of what it shows. But again, it's one of those where you unfold it out and it just shows you a ton of stuff. So it's, it was pretty cool. Look at that price though. 35 cents for that sucker. That thing today, if you bought that in stores, if they were making those, they'd be 10 bucks or more. Hmm. My, how times have changed. Uh, I found a novelization for Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Uh, this one by James Caan. Uh, I love finding novelizations of old films because a lot of times there's stuff in them that is not in the movie of course a lot of times they have to pad it out for storytelling purposes in a novel because of course much different than a film but i love finding them because there's always so much different stuff back to the future was super different than the film uh the frighteners uh is super different than the film so there's a lot of cool stuff that you can find uh, i found a little pvc pound puppy from the animated series i found a uh, 100 years of magic from the walt disney world mcdonald's release uh celebrating walt's 100 100th birthday uh, this one being of Robin Hood. And, of course, we've been hunting these down for years. We could just go on eBay and buy them all, but that would be no fun. It's more fun to hunt them. So uh, we're almost done, though. We've almost found them all. Uh, found a little uh, Arco um, Goofy. Uh, they, they did a bunch of Arco, released a ton of Disney stuff, and this is one of the little figurines you could buy in one of the sets. So um, I found a couple of these. These were Keepers, and these were basically uh, Shoelace holders and as you can see you put your shoelaces through the little holes on the side you'd lift their mouths up you tie it in a bow of course and then you clamp the mouth down on the knot and that would keep your shoelaces from untying on kids shoes so it was kind of cool uh, but we found a garfield one and then also found a goofy keeper which carrie was super excited about because we don't see those a lot uh, not that they're not hard to find but they every once in a while you'll find singles and you won't find sets of them so um, that was kind of cool i found a little Get along, gang figure. She was ceramic. She's about medium size, but um, she didn't have any chips, no paint missing on her, nothing. Some smudges, but nothing bad. But it looked like she was glued to something at one time. Um, you know, she looks like she was glued to a bigger piece, and I'm not sure what she came on. But she was cool to find, and she was neat to to have. Um, this weird little slightly bendy Mickey Mouse who doesn't stand right, so he's leaning up against something in the case because he doesn't want to stand at all. Um, he was like 10 cents, so because we didn't have any, so we grabbed him. I keep doing that. There we go. 
Uh, I buy buttons, like old buttons anytime I find them, like restaurant buttons, movie buttons. This one was fun because since I worked at Pizza Hut for years, years ago, um, this is actually advertising the Super Supreme Pan Pizza from Pizza Hut in 1984. Um, they, the Supreme's still around, but the Super Supreme, sadly, is not a thing anymore. Uh, I don't even know what was on the Super Supreme. That's something Wikipedia will have to I inform me of, but I found that. And then I also found Nathan's old McDonald's badge. So, Nathan, I got your name tag if you ever want it back there, buddy. But uh, I bought this because it was advertising the Super Size. And, of course, Super Size stuff in the past, like the drink was bigger than this. Like, that's a big drink. That's like a 44 ounce. And I think the. Well, I'm going to get a drink on. And the, the Super Size drinks were, were bigger, and the fries were huge. And, yes, McDonald's food makes us fat and is not good for us. But, damn it, it's so tasty and good. I like food. I'm sad. So. The last two things we're going to talk about might make some people a little angry at me. Um, the Omega Virus is a very popular game. It's very hard to find. It's very expensive. I know people are already like, come on, Duvall! So I found this copy of the Omega Virus. It was uh, missing one little piece, one little satellite, which is not a hard piece to come by. Uh, if I want it that bad, I can go to eBay and buy it for two bucks or something because they're not terribly expensive. The game itself complete is terribly expensive. But, so the Omega Virus uh, was complete, oh, that's the cat knocking stuff over, it's fine, uh, was complete, save for that one little satellite piece, uh, but all the cardboard pieces were there, all the other playing pieces were there, the actual um, playing mat was there, the, the instruction manual was there, um, the talking box had a little corrosion in it, but once I got the batteries out and sanded down the corrosion to get the contacts clear, works like a dream. Uh, it was in this old guy's garage in uh, Jamestown, and... Um, I just I saw it. I was like, well, how much do you want for the Omega Virus? And he's like, I don't know. What do you give me for it? And I was like, oh, five bucks. And he's like, it's yours. And so I paid five bucks for the Omega Virus. Um, again, I dug through it to make sure it was all there. But, of course, missing that one satellite uh, wasn't a big deal. But I was like, I'll take it for five bucks. So uh, what's weird is there are two copies of the Omega Virus in this house world right now. There's my copy. And then there's the copy Carrie and I played, which actually belongs to Pixel Dan, which is... Spoiler alert, going to be on an upcoming episode of Bored this next season. So that is why that, that copy's here, because it was Danny's copy, because I had to borrow it from him. Now I own a copy, so it's, it's super weird. There's two copies in here, so it's, 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 it's strange. Um, I also found Clue, the Great Museum Caper, which is a 3D art theft mystery in the classic Clue tradition. I'm a sucker for 3D board games. I really am. I have a problem, um, like a huge problem with 3D board games. I, I buy them when I find them. Um, this one's no different, because... It features the museum as a 3D. Uh, basically, everyone's trying to stop the thief, who's the little gray piece, from stealing all the paintings and getting out uh, one of the padlocked areas uh, safe and sound. So, But it, it had everything there. The dice were there. The playing pieces were there. The mats were there. The only problem was the little camera six, because there were six little red cameras. Camera six, half of it was broke off, but it doesn't matter that much. It's still playable. So, um, It was very cool. It was, very, it was a fun... Fun weekend. Uh, I love doing the sale with Carrie. We love going to it when we can when we can actually make it to it. Um, it's always a thrill to just kind of dig and see what we can find. Again, it was really light on action figures. The, the, the Transformers thing was the only action figure thing I found all weekend. Um, but heavy on a lot of the other stuff that we collect. So uh, it, it, was, it was a fun trip. It was well worth it. But uh, you can check that out. You can go to 127sale.com to check out all the information on the 127 Corridor Sale, uh, which happens again next year, August 1st through the 4th in 2019. 19, so it's always the first weekend of August. So you can check that out. It's almost 700 miles. Um, it's it's it is a must do for just just to do it once. It's fun. So you can check that out. Check us out. Go to YouTube.com/slash/ToyWorldOrder. Hit subscribe. Mash the like button. Uh, make sure you turn on the little bell notification so you'll know when we post videos. We are uh, getting ready to do a lot of work on some new stuff. So make sure you do that so you can keep track of what we're doing. Go to Board. You can check out our sister show, Board. YouTube.com slash Board. The show, do the same thing. Hit subscribe, mash the like button, comment on the videos. Um, hit the bell notification so you'll be told when new stuff of Board's coming. And we're working on some new stuff to Board to kind of... Uh, to kind of so, so it's not so much time in between seasons so there's something else there to enjoy so we're working on some other stuff so check that out and gang uh, like I said earlier it's not just a catchphrase it's what we do keep digging because you never know what you're going to find take care guys